Welcome, this is Shakti Corolla Neverin and uh, if you have been following me you know that I do evolutionary astrology so uh, for some of you I might repeat myself here. Uh, anyway, I'm doing the video today to talk about the full moon in Virgo coming up on Sunday. So uh, whenever we have a full moon what's actually happening the moon is fully opposed by the Sun. So we talk about an opposition in astrology, which also means the Moon gets uh, the full light and reflects it back the, the fullest way. So it's usually considered a time of emotional fullness and, and things are coming up out of the unconsciousness. And uh, then it depends, of course, very much on the sign it is in. So whatever starts with a new moon is kind of coming to a pinnacle with a full moon. And uh, till the full moon we are building up the energy, then it kind of uh, flowers and then we go into the waxing, waxing, integrating phase. So even if the full moon is more spectacular because we can see it with our, our eyes as then the, the new moon, I consider both as being equally important. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so this full moon is going to be early morning on Sunday and uh, it's in Virgo. So Virgo is opposing sign of Pisces and I've talked a lot about Piscean quality, the mystical side in us, how we can connect with a higher state of consciousness, which I call the ocean consciousness. So, so today we more leaning towards the other side. So, of course, truly, each sign in the zodiac is complemented by the opposing sign. So they do meet in the middle. They do have to add something very important to each other. So we consider a, a Pisces high end if there are Virgo qualities integrated. We can consider Virgo high end if Piscean qualities are, are integrated. So, so with Pisces, we have the last sign of the zodiac where it's all about integration and transcendent and that higher uh, divine perspective. And with Virgo, we are really talking about grounding. We are talking about how we are with everything in the world. So it's not about transcending, it's really about applying ourselves, creating structures to, to, to navigate the world. So Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is a messenger from the God, standing for our intellect, our mind, how we filter reality. So, so also Mercury is associated with Gemini, but it comes out a little different. So in Virgo, it's kind of a very uh, rational, organized mind, usually, if there's not a Neptune in, in the game. So uh, with Virgos, we say they're very uh, uh, concerned about details. They, they usually, as an earth sign, are very patient. Uh, so here we have the, the profession of the, uh, the, the one who works with numbers, uh, the tax preparation, that kind of stuff. So uh, on a higher level, we look at Virgo as the sign which has uh, the strongest connection to the ideal, to the vision, how life can be. And of course, the vision is always out there or up there. And then we're here. So Virgo is a sign where there's the biggest discrepancy. They, they feel the discrepancy because uh, they know how, how there could be the, the, the ideal and, and then there is reality. So on the low end, Virgo takes that against themselves. So then they can become very self-critical and anxious and uh, they... they um, they suffer under that, that self-criticism and of course then it gets projected out onto others as well. So uh, Virgo is also the servant. So in Virgo, when we have any planets in Virgo, Sun, Ascendant, Moon especially, but also other planets, we have a, a, a strong 
intuition to serve others, to do good, to do something meaningful with our life. So here we find the, the, uh, the health advisors, uh, the doctors, the nurses, uh, the people who um, do body work, any kind of healing work, nutritional advice, that's all Virgo stuff. So, so Virgo really feels good about where they are <laughs> if they can serve, if they can be helpful and useful for others. So um, therefore that part of Virgo is, is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, the problem starts on the law end, on the shadow aspect, when we use the vision we have against ourselves. And this is where the fears come in. And granted, right now in the world there are uh, many reasons to be fearful, uh, not that it hasn't been that way throughout the ages, but we thought we are so much more advanced and so much more together, but obviously we aren't. So, so the question is how can we balance ourselves in the world? How can we not fall uh, prey to, to those anxieties and fears? And I do believe it has a lot to do with that being useful. So, and that's where the, the Piscean opposition comes in. Whenever we are just identified with our own well-being, with our own ego identity, uh, that's where we get threatened, that's where we get scared. So I always like to talk about that, that metaphor of that we are all a wave in the ocean. And the top of the wave is just our ego identity, and then that's just 5 to 10 percent, and then 90 to 95 percent is in the unconsciousness, that's uh, the belly of the wave. And then the, the wave comes out of the ocean, the divine, and uh, that's a collective or the morphogenetic field. So our, our anxiety is when we feel cut off, when we are just identified up there with me, 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 my story, my needs, my desires. So, so if we can step into the, the Virgo qualities of serving, it's kind of opening us up from the separation of the ocean, basically. So we know there is a bigger reality out there. And that's why the arts, creativity are a wonderful way to, to reach into the ocean and to um, get inspired, to, to bring other thoughts, ideas, images into manifestation somehow. So that can be painting, it can be music, it can be any kind of ideas to create a business, a product. So, so it can take a, a lot of forms here. So uh, what I would like you to do in connection with, with the upcoming full moon is to think about your life and how uh, you can consciously choose an area to contribute, to make a difference, to volunteer for some kind of uh, uh, already uh, act, acting uh, movements and societies. So, so Virgo really strives on finding that right livelihood. So whenever we find a professional expression for something we, we're working on, so the birth chart is kind of the blueprint for for this lifetime, what we're working on, what we're learning, so to speak. So, so whenever we, we find ways to connect that with our professional expression in the world, this is where we talk about right livelihood. This is where we feel satisfied and, and uh, just good about what we're doing. And we're doing with it with, with uh, eight, nine, ten hours a day. So if we don't find that right livelihood, we don't find a profession which connects with our passion, with, with what we really thrive on in our life, then we have to compensate by doing something uh, in that direction, what truly matters for us, uh, in our free time. And uh, after being out to work for eight, nine, ten hours, adding the, the transportation in, uh, it's it's hard to do. So you you be, you're better served if you find uh, a professional expression for what really matters to you. So I would suggest to do a little brainstorm around the full moon and set your intentions with where you want to go, 
and uh, to find a, a situation where you can contribute. Because I promise you, that will make you feel so much better and so much more connected to the bigger picture. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just uh, uh, a wonderful thing to do. So if you have been following me, you know that whatever is happening up there in the heavens always has to be uh, uh, looked back or, or connected back to your chart. So the full moon is always interesting to, to see where is that happening in your chart. And if you don't have your own birth chart, you can go to my website, Maui Astrology Reading, and get it there when you sign up for your newsletter. And then how you do it, let's say this full moon is in Virgo, then you, you have a look in your chart in which house you have the full moon. And, and then you, you look at the degrees and then you see how it interacts with other planets in your chart. And then you get a much more in-depth and specific idea where you have to do that uh, adjustment, where you want to uh, uh, make sure that you are conscious in the steps you take and, and towards that right livelihood and to organize yourself. And then, of course, Virgo is always about uh, balancing your own wellness, creating structures in your life which are ultimately uh, helpful and healthy and supportive. So to have little rituals, like we all, most of us have the ritual in the morning, we get up and we have a coffee or, or a tea. Uh, so, and usually it's a time when we think, when we think ahead of the day, what we want to do. So uh, it's good to have these little rituals and ultimately Virgo is really about well-being. So what can you do in your life to, to create a ritual to experience more well-being? And then of course that well-being is always connected to our physical body and, and how healthy we are, how that will determine uh, how good we feel. So. Um, Oh, I forgot my clock again here. So uh, health and well-being starts uh, first of all with uh, becoming very conscious what we put into our body physically, which means the nutrition, what we eat. And I'm not talking about uh, 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 nutrition to, to lose weight. I'm talking about life food to, to have a vibrant, healthy uh, body. So nutrition is one thing, consciousness about what we take in to our body. Then detoxification is a strong part of any kind of health and wellness. So detoxification could be coffee enemas, uh, um, herbs or teas you're having for, for uh, uh, metal, uh, detox, heavy metal detoxification, uh, colon therapy, uh, infrared sauna. So these are all ways how you can get a lot of the toxicity we just exposed to all, even if we eat organic and, and pretty well. Uh, there is always a need to detoxify. So there's actually a book out called Detoxify or Die, written by an MD. Uh, and uh, it's quite shocking, but she gives a lot of very concrete practical advice how we can get out that toxic burden and load. So, uh, so these are two strong aspects to well-being as nutrition, as detoxification and then of course we have also to talk about exercising. Uh, I know the earth signs, I'm a Taurus, uh, are not too crazy about exercise. I, I, I have to push myself to do it but I know it's good for me. So uh, the fire signs have a much easier signs, time there because they need to move, they love to move. So, so here in Virgo we know that exercising is good for, you, for us. So the key is to find something we uh, enjoy doing. So uh, uh, if we push ourselves, uh, if we have to push ourselves all the time to, to go exercise and do something like we go out jogging and we hate every moment of it, jogging is not the right thing. So, so pay some attention, put some effort into finding out what really uh, uh, serves you, what, what you can do. Mm -hmm. And then the chances that you actually do it are, are much higher. 
Okay, if you guys have any questions, comments, please like my video if you do. Uh, then I will always go back, come back to you to, to uh, respond to comments or questions. So uh, make sure you check out my website and uh, if you're interested in evolutionary astrology, it's just uh, a, a specific perspective into your birth chart from a karmic perspective or as I say, a soul perspective. So if that's of interest for you, you can always connect with me. Okay, I don't see any questions, so uh, I hope this worked for you. Sometimes there are technical problems. So anyway, I wish you a, a happy full moon and uh, a happy Women's Day today. So uh, we're supposed to, red, to wear red, that's why I'm all in red, even if I usually like the color, as you can tell. Uh, so I wish you a wonderful full moon and uh, do a little brainstorming. That's, that's a good way to, to navigate and me, maybe even a little ritual for yourself. Okay, all the best to you. i looking forward to see you on my weekly power on Saturday. And till then, aloha and namaste from Maui.